Hello and welcome back to One Way Designs 238. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these oh so glamorous light up wall sconces using mostly Dollar Tree products. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I'm going to start off with four of these floating wall shelves from the Dollar Tree as well as four of these rectangular wall art decor pieces. Now to prepare my rectangular pieces, I'm just simply taking a flathead screwdriver and I'm making sure that I get it up underneath those staples and I will pull those staples up but then use my needle nose pliers to completely remove them. And I will do this to all four pieces of my rectangular wall art pieces. Now the canvas, I don't discard that. I actually use that to protect my work surface while I am painting. So all four of those pieces have been prepared. I'm going to set those aside and now I'm going to move on to my floating shelves. So I'm going to take two of these pieces and make them into one piece by simply using that technique of the super glue and the masking tape. So what that is, you simply take your super glue, run a nice bead of it on one edge, then you connect it to the edge of the second board. Then I will use my masking tape to cover up the seam. And this is going to be the back of my sconce. So it's not going to make any difference with um, using the masking tape. So once the masking tape is there, the purpose for this is to make sure that nothing slips and nothing slides while that glue is drying. So on the same side that our masking tape is on, I'm going to go ahead and take some of these jumbo pieces of crafting sticks from the Walmart or the Dollar Tree. If you don't have these, you can also use a scrap piece of MDF board, whatever you have. And I'm just going to use a foundation of super glue and hot glue. And I'm going to use these on either side of, well, either end that is, of my now unified one piece over those seams to make sure that everything is nice and solid. Once this is complete, now I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and move on to creating the sides for our sconces. Now to create the sides, I'm going to take these rectangular pieces and I am going to use some of this MDF board. I ended up using two complete signs uh, to create these sides for the sconces. As you see, I'm simply going to take the rectangular piece and I am just simply going to trace it. And once I have traced it, I will then uh, cut it using my craft knife. And to cut it is really easy, really simple. You just score it about five to six times with your craft knife and then it literally will pop. However, when I pop my pieces, I pop it towards me because there is a much cleaner break. Now, as always, whenever you're using your craft knife, please take your time because you don't want to mess your project up and I definitely don't want you getting hurt. Now that scrap piece that we just cut away, we're not going to throw that away because we are going to use that. So once all my pieces have been cut, now I'm going to go ahead and take some of this um, sandpaper and just make sure that everything is nice and smooth. For me, sandpaper, well, the process of sanding something down is just so soothing to me because you see something that's rough and it just makes it so nice and smooth. So now that everything is nice and smooth, I'm going to go ahead and adhere those rectangular pieces that we've cut out to our rectangular wall art piece frames. To do so, I am going to use a foundation of that hot glue, but then I'm also going to bring in my staple gun just to make sure that everything is really nice and secure. And I will do this to all four of those rectangular pieces. And again, this will create 
our sides for our wall sconces. So now that those four pieces are complete, now I'm going to go ahead and position these on the back of our sconce, which was actually making it a sconce now. So to position this, I simply uh, put it in between the two holes that are on the back of our uh, two boards that we made into one. Once I have it where I need it, I just go ahead and mark it, making sure that the line is nice and straight. Once I have marked it, I can go ahead and use some hot glue to attach the piece to my wooden board. So bringing in this piece that I cut away, that I told you that we're not going to discard because we're going to use it. This is actually going to be used as a quote unquote crossbar to be able to give us a hanging apparatus for our sconce. Now what I'm doing is I'm measuring down two inches down um, from the top of each of those rectangular pieces so that again everything is nice and level, everything is nice and cohesive. Once I have measured down two inches on both of those rectangular pieces, now I'm just simply um, measuring where I need to cut the excess away so that it's nice and even. So now that that is done, of course I will sand the edge to make sure that it's nice and smooth. What I want to do now is add some more security to this because I don't want anything falling down or falling apart. So I'm going to bring in my drill and I'm going to drill two holes on either side of these rectangular pieces. Being careful, ever so careful, not to drill completely through the front of our sconces. However, if you do, there is an easy fix later on. Once I have those holes drilled, I am now going to bring in some screws. If you can find the perfect screw um, to use for this project, that would be great. However, all I had was, I believe there were six, not six inch screws. I cannot remember the measurements on those. However, when I used these screws, I was just ever so careful that I did not go completely through the front piece of that wood. So now with that harness that we just made uh, to use as a hanging apparatus, now I'm just simply marking the middle and now I will take uh, my largest uh, drill bit and I will create a hole. And I'm actually going to move this around just to make the hole a bit bigger. And of course, I will bring in my sandpaper just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. As always, double checking your work will keep you from making big mistakes. So now here is the part with me uh, drilling those screws into the piece. As I stated previously, I'm being ever so careful not to screw these screws completely through to the front. If you don't feel comfortable using a drill, uh, you can always simply use the super glue and hot glue technique or the uh, hot glue and whatever um, strong adhesive of your liking and your choosing to adhere these pieces together. So again, I'm double checking the measurements for my harness. And once I have uh, double checked, 
those and everything is right. I'm just going to simply hot glue this down, but I'm going to bring in my drill again to make sure that this is really nice and secure because you don't want this hanging on the wall and then you hear a crack and it hits the floor. So once these have been screwed in, our piece is really tight and really secure. So now I can take this sandpaper and go over this piece for a final sanding, just to make sure that, of course we don't get any splinters, but to make sure that once we paint these, um, you know, nothing is, the, the wood pieces are not very obvious. So to paint this, I am going to go ahead and use a white primer and I'm also going to use a silver spray paint making sure that I spray the inside with a really nice coat of white and the outside with silver as you can see here the reason for spraying the inside that beautiful white is because we're going to use these beautiful uh, LED lights which I purchased from five and below but you can get these from Amazon or Walmart or Lowe's and when I go ahead and adhere these lights to the inside, that white paint will just allow the light to really bounce off of it and give a nice reflection. So when I'm adhering my lights to the inside, I'm making sure that I can still twist off the light to replace the batteries. So for the front, I made this template out of a piece of um, cardboard but then I took this really nice shiny material that I purchased from Hobby Lobby some time ago and I made my template and I cut it out now if you don't have this material you could always order the faux mirror sheets from Amazon or if you want to you can always use Dollar Tree mirrors and cut it down to size so to adhere these uh, I'm going to use first a foundation of hot glue then as you see, I just simply traced it out with a pencil, the shape of my mirror. Uh, and I'm going to take some of this fix all adhesive. This works best. Uh, I've tried other stronger adhesives and it just completely destroyed this material. So this uh, Dollar Tree's fix all adhesive works best for me. Once I have my foundation of that fixed all adhesive, I'm spreading it out just a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead within those perimeters of the markings that we made, just take that hot glue. And this is going to, again, allow us to have a right now adhesion while the fixed all adhesive continues to dry. So once this reflective piece or your mirror piece is attached, now we can move on to, which is my favorite part, the real decorating. So to decorate this, I'm going to use a bit of Mod Podge and glitter, but it's not going to look gaudy. Well, as you can see, first of all, I had to trim away some of the excess of that material. But now we get to the decorating. I'm just using a ratio of one part of this Mod Podge to two parts of glitter or however chunky you want it to be. And I'm simply going to lay down a really nice thick layer of this Mod Podge and glitter mixture. As always, this is going to make sure that that silver spray paint on the front is nice and sealed, but it's also going to add the shimmer and the glitz that I'm looking for. So I'm for me with the glitter, I used a fine glitter as well as the standard size glitter. So once I have a really nice thick coat of this Mod Podge laid down, I'm going to go ahead and bring in some of this uh, Mylar. And you're going to see what that shredded Mylar is in just a minute. Now, 
Now, if you happen to get just a little bit of the Mod Podge on your reflective piece, don't worry about it because we are actually going to go ahead and uh, put a piece of trim over the edge of that. So now, I'm going to bring in this really pretty reflective shredded mylar. I do pick this up from Walmart. However, sometimes you can find something very similar and very pretty um, at Hobby Lobby as well. And I'm laying down a really nice, thick, chunky line of it where the reflective piece meets that wood. And I'm also just scattering out a little bit of it just to, you know, even out the chunkiness. Once I've laid that down, that mylar, now I'm just going to shake away the excess. So once this has dried, now those holes that we had left in our shelves, or if you happened just to make a hole accidentally while you were drilling in your two sidebar pieces in the back, now is the time to cover those up. And I am just simply going to attach some of these acrylic gemstones using hot glue. I find that hot glue works best because it does not allow the backs of these to make the stone, um, how do you say, foggy and cloudy. So this is working in our advantage because not only is this allowing us to cover those holes, but it's also bringing in a little bit more sparkle to this project. So now to actually cover up those edges, I'm going to use this trim that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I love this particular trim because I'm able to cut it down, as you see, into the number of strands that I need. If you don't want to use, uh, spend the money on this trim, you can always use the traditional uh, diamond wrap that you can find from the Dollar Tree, you can find it at Hobby Lobby. You can use the, the what is it, the floral uh, diamond wrap pieces, or you could order whatever piece you like from Amazon. So for me to attach this, I'm just laying down that hot glue, and this is going to be really tight and really secure. Because what I found with this particular trim is it's like heat activated. I could iron this onto an, uh, a garment and it wouldn't go anywhere. So when the heat from the hot glue attaches to this, it just instantaneously is like seriously attached to the project. So once I have attached the second piece of this trimming, this project is complete. And you can go as heavy as you would like with the mylar and the glitter. You can go as heavy or as light as you would like with uh, the gemstones as well. So this is what my sconces look like. I absolutely love how these turned out. If you can't tell with that material, the um, fix all adhesive just allows it to kind of bubble up and it gives it like a nice texture it's not completely flat but just it gives it a really nice textured look and i absolutely love that i wish you all could see this in person because the camera does not do this any justice at all i love how sparkly these are and i love the size of these they're nice and big especially to be made from dollar tree products So now I want to show you what these look like in the dark all lit up. I think that these again turned out phenomenal and again painting the inside of the sconces white really 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 allows that light to reflect. Well. I hope that you all have enjoyed today's project as much as I have enjoyed making it and bringing it to you. As always, my prayer for you is that you continue to stay safe and blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.